Hey everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. This is the third and final part in our series on the version 1.4 firmware update. We've been working our way through the features, and we've got a few more to go, so let's get right to it. Let's look at one other enhancement they've made with this version, and that would be with the multi-knob. In the first video of this series, when we were loading the new firmware, I mentioned that you noticed the kilohertz display on the upper right corner of the display here, and that's because the multi-function knob now, by default, when you're in VFO mode, it changes the kilohertz, so that's kind of a convenient way to tune up and down fast. You don't really need to um, tap the kilohertz and get the little arrow there so you can do it with the main tuning knob. You can just leave that off and use the main tuning knob as normal and then use the multifunction knob to tune kilohertz. The other default functionality now is when you are in the memory mode, the display up here says MCH for M channel or memory channel and now the knob when you're in memory mode I don't have very many memories in here but I have a few it takes you through whatever you have programmed in the memories and that way you don't have to use the up and down arrows over here you still can the up and down arrows work to go through the memories but uh, you can use the knob and that's a little bit more convenient or at least I think it is so those are the new default functions for the multi-knob. Where it becomes really nice is if you have a particular function that you like to adjust frequently. So if we press the multi-knob and we bring the menu up here, let's say, for example, you use the monitor on your radio and you like to adjust the monitor volume up and down without changing your receiver volume so you can monitor your transmit signal. You'd probably use this mostly if you're either using headphones or if you're doing CW. If you press and hold monitor, you'll notice that the little pointer up here turned orange. It now says Moni for monitor. And now if I turn the monitor or turn the multifunction knob, the display momentarily changes to show me the monitor percentage and then I can uh, adjust the monitor gain without having to go into that menu. Now, the way that they've done this, you have access to virtually, uh, not virtually, I think actually, every function that the multi-knob adjusts, you can set to be the default function. So let's put it back to default, which to put it back to default, if you just press and hold, the multi-knob, it sets it back to the default function and then it turns gray again. But on the menu here, I've only got these four items. But if, for example, if I go into um, CW mode when I press the menu, I now have different options. I have key speed and CW pitch. If I press and hold CW pitch, that now becomes the default function for the knob, and that stays the default function even if I change modes. So whatever you put in here as your um, selected default function will stay. Now let me set that back, and it also includes functions that are not necessarily accessed by pressing the multi-knob. So for example, the notch filter... If you press the notch filter, you have auto notch, you press it again, and you've got manual. And if you press and hold the notch filter button, you get the menu here to adjust the notch filter manually. And some of you that work CW a lot may like this. The position, which is basically adjusts the pitch that the manual filter is tuning out. If I press and hold that, now it shows notch up here. And when I have the notch filter on, and it shows basically zero to, I forget how low, down minus 100 to plus 100 is the uh, adjustment range. And it shows the numbers as you're turning it. But um, now you can leave the notch in there, 
and you can adjust the notch up and down. So if you want to try to notch out nearby CW signals, maybe you like leaving the filter widths a little wider, but you want to just notch out another signal. So again, basically anything that you adjust with the multi knob, you can set as the default. And if you look in the little uh, manual segment, that has the information on the firmware update. It lists everything that you can adjust with the knob. So that's the new feature for the multifunction knob. Earlier we looked at how you could customize a couple of the front panel keys to set them up to do different functions if you wanted some other function besides the normal button function. Similarly, another enhancement with version 1.4 is the two buttons on the microphone, the up and the down button, can also be customized. And you can get to those if you press menu, set, and function, and then actually it's on page 7 of 8, and it's right below the front panel key customize, there is mic key customize. And they've actually changed the default function uh, of the up-down buttons from what it was before this version. So the uh, default function is up VFO kilohertz and down VFO kilohertz. Let's just illustrate that here. So if I press the buttons up and down, it actually goes down and up one kilohertz at a time. Uh, the, the normal function that was on here before this version was that it would just go up and down, I think it was 50 hertz at a time, it wasn't 10, but it was a much finer tuning. So let's go back in here to the mic key customize, and we'll customize the up button. And you still have the choices here, so the default now is up kilohertz, but you can change it to up, and then uh, let's actually go to down and we will change that one to down and if I change it back this is the way that it worked before this new version of firmware yeah it's 50 Hertz at a time so the up and down buttons give you a little bit finer tuning if you were uh, not that the 7300 is a great mobile rig but if you had it mounted in a mobile setup you could use the microphone to tune around a little bit um, with the up down buttons but much more than up and down now. Uh, if you like to use the mic for other things, or if you'd like to use those buttons for other things, you have quite a few choices. So uh, you can have it be the XFC button, which shows, which will momentarily put you on your transmit frequency or let you monitor your transmit frequency if you're working split or maybe duplex on the 10 or 6 meter bands. You can have a button be the VFO memory to switch you back and forth between VFO and memory. It can be band up and down, so you can use the buttons to change bands. You can use the button to press the speech button for you to have the radio announce the frequency and mode and so forth. Uh, you can have the microphone button change modes. And uh, you can also have the microphone buttons activate any one of the first four uh, keyer memories, either voice or the CW key or the RIDI memory. So, and then you can see here there's several other functions. I'm not going to go through all of them, but you can basically customize the buttons for whatever is convenient for you. Again, this will be a largely personal preference thing. So, for example, I'm going to change the up uh, up button to switch me between VFO and memory mode. So up now puts me in memory and VFO. So I think you get the idea, but you can make those be whatever you find convenient or however you like to operate. Again, another really nice user enhancement with this version. All right, there's just a couple minor things left to show you, and I'm going to actually show you in the information PDF that comes with the firmware update rather than on the radio. So one item that's in the update that's kind of handy is they show you the touchscreen display and all of the things that change. So the kilohertz and the fact that the clock moved over and 
a few other items. Uh, so it just shows you on the display where some things have moved around uh, because of this. And you can look at the indicators here to see what those are. And then if we scroll down past the items we've already covered here, down on page 7, there are just a couple other minor things. Tone control settings in the data mode. So if you have the radio in any data mode, that's where when the mode is up you have dash D. It has the tone control settings disabled. So if you go into the set menu and the radio is in data mode, you won't be able to change anything. The reference adjust, the frequency reference adjust, and we briefly mentioned this when we were loading the firmware because it asked if I wanted to load this when I reloaded my settings. This is for calibrating the frequency standard inside the radio. They've changed the display for this so that it shows the tenths digit. So it just gives you a little bit finer resolution on the display. Again, only if you're calibrating the radio frequency will you uh, be concerned about that. Uh, the CIV or the CAT control USB port, the default setting for this was to link it to the remote jack. There's a separate jack on the back of the radio for using the ICOM remote control serial um, link that allows you to control multiple radios from one serial port. The default was to have that remote jack linked to the USB port. So effectively they were the same serial port and they've changed that to unlink. Not really sure why they did that, but a minor change there. And then on the firmware update screen, and this is the way this works already or had worked already on newer radios like the 705. When you do a firmware update, the first thing that it does is pop up and ask you if you want to save your settings to an SD card. So instead of going and separately doing that uh, as we did, it actually comes up on the firmware update menu and asks if you want to do that. And if you say yes, it takes you directly to the save your settings function to save all your settings to an SD card. So just a nice little convenience. Um, keyboard entry. If you're using the full screen keyboard, they have it set up so that if you turn caps lock on and then you toggle the, the keyboard to numbers to type in numbers, when you go back to the alphabet mode, it's still got caps lock on before it would drop it back to lowercase again. And finally, I have no idea what this one means. It says the default tuning step in CW mode is changed from 1 kilohertz to 100 hertz. I was planning, playing around with the main tuning dial and I was playing around with like the kilohertz function on the multi knob now. And I was playing with some of the different settings for tuning step and the default tuning step on the main dial in CW is actually 10 hertz already, not 100. Um, so... I don't have any idea what this one means. I haven't figured that out yet, but if somebody finds out, you might put it in the comments. Anyway, those are some other minor changes, um, and they're covered here in the documentation that you can download with the update. I think that about covers it. Well, we made it through everything. I didn't originally plan on this being three parts, but this update did add quite a bit of new functionality. I think it makes the 7300 an even better radio. In the description, you'll find links to the firmware update and the information document that provides the new user's manual sections. I've also included links to the first two parts of this series. In addition to those links, please check out the link for a to z.tech. That's the companion website for this channel. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, I'd appreciate a click on the like button. If you find the channel useful, please consider subscribing. Please also click on the bell icon to be notified when new videos come out. I'm always happy to see your comments with questions, suggestions, corrections, or any other thoughts you might have. And as always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.